Hello, my name is John. I'm from Australia. I'd like to welcome you to this course on similarities and diversity. So before I go into what I think that we might talk about in this course, I'd like you to think about why it is that we want you to learn about similarities and diversity, or similarities are things that we have in, comity, in common, I'm sure you know that, and diversity is things that uh, are different about us and different about things around us. So why do you think, as a skills-based course, a life skills course, you think it might be important for you to learn about what is different in the world and what is the same in the world, and so what? How is that going to help you in your life? What have you seen in your life that would make you think, hmm, those differences, that was good, or hmm, that was not so good how that went, or those similarities, wow, that was good, or hmm, that was not so good. So what, what do you think you might be learning, or what have you noticed already um, about these things, similarities and differences? Because what we would like you to learn, and what we're going to cover in this course, is some fundamental ideas about what's at the heart of similarities, and what's at the heart of differences. And is this thing about similarities good? And also, is difference good? Or has it been not so good? Or could we do better? And maybe that's the most important point, it's the last point, could we do better? And indeed, at your school, which has such a great motto, um, we are one, of course this is a great idea. Um, in Australia we have a song, it's called, we are one and we are many, because that is the truth of our land. And how do we make that work? That's the question. And that's what this course is all about. It's learning about how you in your lives, in your family, in your school, with your friends, as a part of your neighborhood, your community, your town, your country, your world, as part of the animal kingdom, as part of nature, as part of the universe. What's your place in that? And how do you make all of that work better? So we're going to start off with the smallest, 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 smallest things. And then we're going to go wide, wide, wide into the whole universe and where you fit and how you can make your lives work better. So let's get down to it. Okay, similarities. I'd like you to think about similarities. I'd like you to think about in your classroom or in your world, in your home. Maybe you're not in a classroom right now. Maybe you're watching a computer. But in your home, in your community, the people around you, for example. Let's just think about the people in your family, in your home. What do you have in common with them? What are the things that are the same? Well, of course, you could start off by saying you're all humans. Uh, maybe, you know, some of you in the home are, you know, male. Some of them may be female. Some of them may be something in between male and female. Um, Maybe that's something you have in common, or maybe that's a difference. Hmm. Well, let's, let's go a little bit deeper than that. Let's go maybe in the whole world. What do we have in common with others? Well, it could be many things, couldn't it? It could be our hair, long or short. It could be the color of our eyes. It could be um, whether we're male or female, whether we're um, from a different country or a different place, we could have those things in common, but they could also be differences, couldn't they? So in, in everything, when we think of something that is something that we have in common, there's also differences in that. So if we think even something as similar as eye color, well, you have people with blue eyes, but, you know, they can be bluish gray, or they can be, they can have speckles, or they can be big blue eyes or small blue eyes, or squinty blue eyes, or blue eyes but blind, or blue eyes that are seeing. Hmm. So, when we have similarity with most everything, I mean, you can think about that with 
boys and girls. Clearly there's lots of different types of boys and girls. There's lots of different types of behaviors. There's lots of even different types of things like strength. We can think of people as being strong, but what are we talking about? Are we talking about physical strength? Arr. Are we talking about emotional strength or emotional in intelligence as it's called? That's the ability to really g be able to get along with others, to be sensitive to other people's needs as well as being connected with yourself. That's a type of strength. Are we talking about strength in running? Or are we talking about strength in fighting? Or are we talking about the strength of courage? So there's even many different types of strength. So I guess what one of the first things to say is, while we have all these groups with similarities, this is similarities, in each of these groups we have diversity. There are differences within each, within each group. So let's go a bit deeper, because really one of the things that we want you to get out of this course is not just some knowledge, but we want you to change your behavior, change how you do things in the world and be more successful in the world. And one of the things that's important to do that is your attitude. And how do you get a different attitude? Well, you get a different attitude by learning different things, so we'll learn some different things. Also by doing things and by watching how other people do things. Um, so, if you're going to be learning stuff, we'll learn some basics about what makes up our real world, including the invisible world. We'll also learn about um, how other people do things by, uh, in your homework sessions, going out and observing what's going on, watching what you do, how you respond, as well as how other people do things and th how they respond. And we'll also, um, yeah, we'll just give you some ideas about some of the things that seem to work better in the world and some things that don't work so well. Okay, and we will hope that you will end up doing notice the things that don't work well, because that's important, but also notice the things that are, doing, that are working well and do less of the not so good things and more of the good things. All right, let's get back to what we mean by similarities. So we've got that, you know, we're all humans, which is all part of the animal world, which is all part of life, um, the living things of the world. So these are all commonalities, similarities. But let's go a little bit deeper. And let's work out um, within each of us what we're made of. So I'm sure you know by now that you've heard of that we're made up of cells, right? They're very small, little, individual, well actually they're kind of individual animals in many ways, uh, especially in, in animal cells. Um, they all have within themselves a range of different organs and things that work to make the cell work and they have like a, a membrane around them which they uh, communicate with things that are outside of them. And in fact, an example of that is what's inside your gut. Inside your gut are actually living organisms. And those living organisms, and there's not one or two or three or four, there's billions of organisms that are living, not just in our gut, they live on our skin, they live in our blood, they live in a range of different places, but especially in our gut, there's many billions of them. And that makes up who we are. Without those organisms, we wouldn't be able to digest our food. Uh, we would die, actually. So, within ourselves, we have these colonies, and not just colonies of organisms in our gut, but our actual cells, the very small parts in our body that make ourselves up. Each of those, kind of in their own way, have a life of their own. Now, it turns out that they can't all survive independently there's all different types of cells. We have heart cells and they're different from our bone cells and they're different from our blood cells and they're different from our brain cells or neurons. But they all, well, they all kind of work independently. And in fact, where they come from um, in evolution, they all were separate once upon a time. They were like, you know, single cell organisms wandering around, just doing their own thing, and then they clumped together and they worked out that they could do more 
together and then they became more and more complex so they could do more and more things and that ended up with us humans and you can see that you know just in your own lives actually if you find out where you came from you came from initially two cells from your mother and your father they got together they divided and made four eight many more cells you became a multicellular organism but so tiny you'd need a microscope to see you and then you develop bigger and then you looked a bit like a fish at one stage as you were developing and you got more and more complicated until it was time for you to be born and you were born a human baby but all of the things that made you up well they are all separate kind of individual things that collect to make you who you are so there's you so that makes you similar to yourself but within you is a great deal of diversity now what else is similar okay you may have heard of atoms so atoms are the building blocks of everything all of the matter in the universe is made up of atoms okay so they're fundamental tiny building blocks um, inside of each of those building blocks is maybe even some smaller things but we can just settle on atoms as a fundamental building block of everything whether it's a rock whether it's your hand whether it's your friend everything that you can see feel and touch is made up of atoms and atoms is really condensed energy and if you think of atoms and matter as condensed energy then really the whole universe is made up of energy so that's what we're all made up of and one of the one of the things that I'd like to say about this course is I want you to understand and it's a very tricky thing to understand so normally when I think about myself I think of myself as being separate from you your way over there I think of myself as being separate from my mum and my dad I think of myself as being you know separate but of course in reality, this is a bit hard to, to grasp, but in reality, we are all made of the same stuff. We are all one in reality. But we are also many. We are also different. We all have our differences. But our differences, the difference in you, is really something that's a part of me. I know this is hard to, to, to think about but so when I look at a tree or this picture or you know things over here this plant maybe I might think well that's me I'm a human and that's a plant that's over there but we are all part of this one planet and you can think of this planet as an organism as well the same way that you can think that the atoms got together they made this, the molecules and the cells and then the cells got together and they made the animals and the plants and you know so really in in our world this is like one big organism so getting back to yourself you have an arm well hopefully you have an arm or two arms you may or may not but let's suppose you have an arm or a leg or a piece of your body now you could you know maybe cut that off I don't I don't suggest that you do that but if you didn't have that arm you would not be nearly as functional as what you would otherwise be and indeed if you didn't have your heart or your brain or your kidneys it would be very difficult for you to live or impossible so the same is true in our planet of course we know this you know this um, so this tree this plant is in some ways, in many ways, essential ways, it is part of me. This is part of me. This is part of who I am. I survive in this planet and I am in this planet in harmony or related to, strongly related to this plant. So the word relationship is really important here because when we're talking about diversity and remember everything that has similarity every group 
has diversity inside of it. It's about how things relate to each other. So of course we're going to be talking a lot about relationship and how to manage relationship. And the first step here, the difficult step, really in many ways is to imagine and to know that we essentially, even though we are our own selves and we, you know, independence is an important concept and idea, while we can be independent, we are also at the same time dependent or interdependent that means connecting with working together with everything around us we are one and we are many that's what you need to understand because that's the attitude that's required for working well in the world for finding your place in the world, for being in harmony with the world. And when I say the world, I'm talking about the world within you. So within you, there's different parts of you. You might think about that. What are the different parts about you? Let's think about behaviors. Do you always behave in the same way? No, of course not. You would be a robot if you did. Even robots don't always behave the same way, well at least my computer doesn't. Anyway, within ourselves, at times we might be happy, at times we might be sad, at times we might be well behaved, at times we might be a bit cheeky and naughty. You know, so we have these different parts of ourselves. So it's important that we connect in the same way that our body is connected with each part of itself. We need to think about our own person and consider the different types of people we are at different times and connect with ourselves. Let me give you an example of this, make it really clear. So, you might think about, for example, boys and girls as being very different. And of course, um, boys and girls and things in between um, are different. You know, that's obvious. But you'd be surprised at how much similarity there is between boys and girls. And maybe that's one of the things that I'd like you to do. I'd like you to think about what are the characteristics that you think are particular to girls and the characteristics that are particular to boys. And then look inside yourself and see if you have any of those characteristics inside yourself. Indeed, one of the things that's important to do within yourself is to get connected with yourself, including the things that we typically may be thought of as boy characteristics and the things that we thought of as girl characteristics, and have a look inside of ourselves about what we have inside ourselves, who we are as a person. And to check this out, if you have a friend, and particularly someone who's doing this course, um, and, and if they're, you know, a different gender from you, um, you might ask them about what are their different characteristics. And you might talk with them about what you think might be, you know, a female characteristic or a male characteristic. And if they have those characteristics and how strong those characteristics are, you might be surprised. You might be surprised that something as obvious as boy and girl might not be so obvious after all, particularly in the way that we behave. Now, if you have the characteristics that are very strong, you know, as being boy and, you know, you don't have much female characteristics, actually, inside you, you probably do. When we were developing, we had both male and female characteristics before we were born, and then it gets separated out. But within us, we have the potential to have both sets of characteristics. And if we have both sets of characteristics and we have that in balance, we are more whole. So this is a, an example of similarity and diversity within each of us. Now between us, between say boys and girls, of course there's differences. And those differences can be sometimes challenging, but they can also be 
really interesting. One of the reasons why there are boys and girls in the world, why there is in, in, amongst the animal uh, kingdom and indeed much of the plant kingdom, um, males and females, is because diversity seems to work really well when it's done well. So diversity, when it cooperates and connects, this bit plus this bit, if they're different, can make more when they're together. So a good example of that. We mentioned strength before. So, you know, by myself, I might be able to lift up, you know, whatever, 10 kilograms. But if I've got maybe three other people, well, I might be able to lift up 30 or 40 kilograms. And if one of those people is particularly strong, I might actually be able to lift up 100 kilograms. Because together, we can do more, right? Um, now, I might not be really good at lifting things. But I might be really good at, I don't know, mathematics. So, if my friend and I kind of... So, my friend might be, you know, the really strong kid and sporty kid and I might be the nerdy maths kid. But if we can get together, then, you know, I can learn more about being strong and, not just that, but I can also, you know, we can collaborate together and move things and play uh, strong games. And my friend, who may not be so great at maths, can learn more about maths and can get excited about maths, like I'm excited about maths. Actually, to be honest, I'm not that excited about maths. Not bad, um, but you know, it's, it's uh, not my favorite thing. And so that's why I have friends who are great at maths, because together we do great things. Um, so, a little bit more about diversity. Uh, what is diversity? So can you think of some more examples of things that are different? And things that are different which work well together. So we talked about how our body works together. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that works well together? What about in your family? How does that work? Can you think of the times when you've been as a family or, you know, uh, depends what you call family. Maybe your friends at school are your family. I don't know. But people around you, can you think of a time when that worked well? and what you were doing together that worked well. So this is a diverse group of people. You might have older people, younger people, male, female, people with different characteristics. Can you think of a time when that worked well? And what was it that made it work well? Or maybe you can think of times when it didn't work well, when those differences ended up in struggles and fights and difficulty. You might think about that in your school, when you've been in school or just with your friends, when there's been difficulties between people who had different ideas or ways of doing things. So there's a lot of good things going on in the world like that. Your school that you're going to now is one of the good things in the world. Your school is about connecting with each other. It's about deciding on certain things that connect you. And some of those things you may have to learn. For example, your school may have a set of values that they believe are good values for everyone to share. And then you learn those values and then you learn to live those values. And because you have these similar values, you get along better. So this doesn't always happen just naturally. Sometimes you have to work at it. So, let's talk about challenges in diversity for a moment. What are the main challenges that you've seen when things are different? So I want to let you know that amongst human beings, difference wasn't always an easygoing thing. Once upon a time, um, you know when resources were scarce and uh, you know, we, we, we were cave people maybe. I mean, I'm sure cave people survived. I mean, we weren't the biggest, strongest animals individually, but we survived by coming together as a collective, learning how to 
you know, look after each other. And we had to do that because our babies were quite helpless. So we had to come together to care for our babies, to look after the mothers of the, of the children in the community, and also to go out hunting because the animals were bigger and stronger than us. So how would we get one animal? Well, we learned to hunt together to get animals. So that's how we survived. But it was also because there weren't so many resources. Maybe if you were in one tribe, one group in an area, you didn't necessarily want another group coming over and taking your resources. So we would often treat difference with, um, with you know, fighting difference, right? So that's one way of treating difference. I don't like it, I don't want it, I'm going to fight it. Um, and you see that a lot in the world today. You may have heard in politics, um, you know, that in, in some countries people, a lot of people believe things over here and other people believe things over there and it creates conflict in the country. Wars can come out of just a different set of beliefs and people not being able to come together and to work together around those different beliefs. So that can result in wars. And those wars can happen in your home, in the school, on the playground, between countries, um, and this course is about not only how to prevent that, but also how to recognize that diversity is normal and natural. And that sometimes it's uncomfortable. But if we can learn skills to embrace diversity, then we will all together be bigger than what we are now. So getting back to how this, you know, we can be fighting difference. Some people fight difference. Some people are uncomfortable with difference and then they just ignore it. They look the other way. So, you know, you might not be used to people um, who've, you know, had um, lost a limb or had some sort of disability. So you might avoid those people or look away. You might ignore them. Now that's probably better than hurting them. But how does that let them feel? And what do you learn about how they've lived? You learn nothing and they don't get anything. In the first scenario where there's fighting, well, of course, that can end up with people separating and being different from each other, uh, like not, not learning from each other. In the second scenario, you may not fight them or hurt them, but there is very little connection if you're ignoring them or no connection apart from the person who's ignored, might feel hurt. It's a kind of bullying, actually, when it's in the playground.